So welcome to this new series on building a two and a half inch gauge locomotive. Uh, I've got some bits down here, you may have seen them in a previous video. Uh, the first thing I'm going to be making is going to be the front bogey, which is using these two pieces of uh, laser cut steel. Uh, I did actually buy steel stock to do this from scratch, but in retrospect I think actually getting a bit of a heads up on this, it's quite, quite inexpensive, was a good thing to do. However, I'm still missing some rivets, some riveting tools to actually get started. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to quickly circle around and talk a little bit about two and a half inch gauge and this locomotive in particular. Gauge three, or number three as it was originally known, was one of the five standard model gauges recommended by a subcommittee of the Society of Model and Experimental Engineers in February 1st, 1899. And at this time, there really was a massive gulf between miniature railways like the Romney Hyde and Dimchurch and model railways that were gauges zero and one. There was kind of nothing in the middle for the average engineer. In the 1930s, the popularity of these intermediate scales started to grow and Curly Lawrence, who was a major contributor to model engineer, uh, was a really strong proponent of two and a half inch gauge as something that was affordable by the everyday model engineer uh, and still had the ability to both haul passengers and perform duties on a scenic railway. One of the benefits for me is that because it's half the size of 5 inch, that means it's an eighth of the volume, which means all those expensive materials and castings cost significantly less, and yet it's still human sized. It's small enough to be affordable and to be able to work in an average workshop, but they're also large enough to have a locomotive type boiler and to be coal fired. In the 1920s, an eight foot curve radius would have been fine. And in modern eras, something like an 18 foot radius will allow you to haul passengers at more or less any speed. So between the two of them, you can fit it into even a fairly modest modern garden. And what's amazing about this scale is there are two societies that deal with the different aspects of it. At first you have the National Two and a Half Inch Gauge Association, which deals with live steam, passenger hauling, classic designs, that kind of stuff. And on the other hand, you also have the Gauge 3 Society, which deals with high detail, high fidelity, fine scale, battery or electric operated uh, locomotives for scenic layouts. Now obviously, a two and a half inch gauge locomotive isn't a five inch gauge. It's not gonna be worth 15,000 pounds when I finished it, and it can't pull 20 people around a track that's half a mile long for hours and hours at a time. But it was never intended to be that. It's still an intermediate step. But I think unlike the Stuart 10V and the oscillating engine I've built before this, this will result in something that I'll really be proud of and I actually want to have. And if I decide to continue with two and a half inch gauge, there are dozens and dozens of designs that I'm really excited about building. And if not, it will give me the baseline techniques and the experience to be able to pick exactly whatever five inch gauge locomotive I want. And I won't be stuck with picking one which is simple enough for me to deal with as a beginner. At least that's the theory. Now, LBSC, Cody Lawrence, was an amazing writer as well as an inspiration for model engineering and i just want to quote a short passage from uh, his instructions to building the southern maid which he described as a locomotive for anyone to be able to build he says now tyros beginners novices l card merchants or whatever you like to call them they are my special friends the reason well imagine a dismal kitchen in a poor apartment house the dilapidated table in the corner. Picture yourself a poor kid in torn and grubby sailor jumper and shorts, trying to build for himself a working steam locomotive. His only materials were a few bits of scrap brass and copper salvaged from goodness knows where, some tin obtained from cut up cans. His tools, a soldering bit, a blowpipe, some discarded scissors, a flimsy Archimedean drill, a stumpy hacksaw frame made from a bent piece of rod, a hammer and chisel and a couple of badly worn files. No help, no information, not even parental encouragement, and only trouble for getting in the way and making a mess. But eventually the locomotive was built, a crude caricature in truth, but it worked. And since then half a century has elapsed, 
that same kid is writing these words, offering to the best of his ability, a helping hand to all of those who have need of it. And to me, that's inspirational writing and has inspired me to give two and a half inch gauge and Curly Lawrence LBSC's Brighton Atlantic a shot. So stick with me, because it's time to get to work. Thank <laughs> you.